Yo, waka 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 Hey yo This song is dedicated Can you not? To all the happy people <laughs> Yo, what a fam! What's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new Ask JT number 20 Wow, we've come a long ways here Oh my god, 20? Yeah, 20 20, honey have you been watering the tree? Fuck no. Wait, really? Because there's like full water in it. It must be reproducing on its own. If you guys are new to the series, if you guys are new to the channel, you might be. The channel has been crazy growing lately, babe. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers. That's awesome. The no, honestly, I want to thank you guys for, for so much. Uh, I want to thank you so much for all the support. 2016 was a crazy year. We gained over 20,000 subs. Let's see, 2017. Let's kill it on the road to 100K. If you're new to the series, leave your questions. Hashtag... I was gonna literally make the fucking hashtag sign with my fingers. Fucking kill me. <laughs> Leave your questions, hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> hashtag ask JT. If I didn't get your question this video, hopefully I'll get to it next time. Let's hop right into this. First question, we have a shitload of them for number 20. Ask you number 20. I'm like, we're going ham. We have over 10 questions. You should be like a bitter or whatever. Eh, this is not my and number one, number one, number one, number one, coming up on the round, they come up on the round, two, number two, number two, number three, number three, the horse is coming up in the ass, number four, number four is coming around. Ah! Don't throw a Yonkey! Did you throw a Yonkey at me? Did you throw a fucking Yonkey? Did you fucking Yonkey? Okay. Alright, first question for Ask JT number 20. Austin Miller says, How would you go about getting dip, cigarettes, e juice, etc. on deployment? Great question. Now that stuff is like fucking drugs on the ship. It's like crack. That stuff is like crack cocaine, heroin. Uh, what else is a bad drug? Meth. Meth. But no, seriously, think about it. You're trapped out in an iron ship 30, 40, sometimes 50 days straight. The only release you're getting is through that shit, through the tobacco, through the nicotine. That stuff is a hot commodity. And believe it or not, that stuff will run out. On the ship, we have a ship store. Now, you know, we sell everything on the ship store. You know, they have food, you know, from really good chips to the best candy to, you know, some of the Vienna sausages to all your best ramen. Eating the burner fire right now. Man, it's hot up in my mouth. You can find me eating ramen up on my couch. Every time I stop I say, wow. You know, they have a wide variety of, of foods. And sometimes the ship store will run out of food and also tobacco and dip. And uh, normally that happens, you know, that happened to my ship because we were in the Middle East in the Persian Gulf deployed for like five months straight so you know sometimes we would uh it would be long periods in between the replenishments at sea so the ship store would run out of all that shit now the smart thing people did some people bought logs and logs of dip and extra cartons of cigarettes and they would sell that shit for like double the price triple the price um when that stuff ran out because people got desperate question two from tap dancing monkeys does boot camp go by fast now, as my uh, good friend Kyle Gott has said, the hours seem- Oh, fuck, I fucked it up, dude. Let me tell you, sweetie. As my oh! good friend Kyle Gott has told me, in boot camp, the minutes seem like hours, the hours feel like days. Wait, no, how the fuck does it go? All right, this is how it fucking goes. I fucked it up. The third time's a charm. The hours feel like days. The days feel like weeks. But the weeks go by really fast in boot camp. You know, you'll be like, Oh man, fuck, boot camp's going by so slow, man. It's only been, oh shit, boot camp's almost over. You know, that'll happen in boot camp. It'll be like, fuck, it's over already. Papa, come here, Papa. Come here, Papa. Seriously? That's a good boy, Papa. That's a good man, Papa. Next and great question from Austin George. Is it better to go to college while you serve your four years in the Navy or wait till you get out? Can you finish all four years of college while you serve your first enlistment? Hell to the no. There is no way to quote me. I don't care if you guys can be like, yeah, dude, I've heard of people that did all of their 120 fucking credits in four years. Yeah, I bet you that's like less than 1% of motherfuckers. If you're at a sea going command or if you're at a duty station in the Navy and are part of a job that actually has to do shit, you're going to have zero, hardly any time in your first year or two in the Navy to hardly do any classes at all. And even when you are able to do college classes, you're probably only going to be able to do two maximum at a time maybe three without killing yourself and still being able to work you know in the military and do all your regular duties come in for this question come in here for this question um hi 
Hi. Introduce yourself. I'm Jesse. This guy says I leave for Navy Basic in one month and he just broke up with his girlfriend. Did he make the right decision? Say cue the music. Cue the music. What would you think if you broke, do you think he broke up with his high school sweetheart? And now he's like, I'm going to the Navy, I'm going to plunder these hoes. I don't know, I think joining the Navy. I'm going to pillage single. these hoes. It's a good idea. Yeah, I was single all my five years from Not 18 to- Not if you're in a relationship, might be hard. You're fine, dude. You're going to go on deployment, you're going to travel the world, there's many of women you're going to see. Oh, this is a good one, Johnny Poo Poo. Johnny Poo 19 says, uh, if you live in a state where it's legal to use marijuana, are you allowed to use it while in the IRR? So what he's saying is, in the individual ready reserve, that's what you do after your active duty. You know, so most people will serve four years active duty, but you have an eight year obligation. And those other four years encompass, you can either do active reserves, where you're a weekend warrior, you go to the base once a weekend, or you can do inactive ready reserve. So that's what I'm doing right now. Basically, you just check in once a year until those eight years that your contract is up. So I did my five, I had three years of IRR, I've already done two, I have one year left. So pretty much all I have to do is you check in once a year, you don't get drug tested, you just sign something in over the mail and say, yeah, I have live at this address still, yeah, I'm fine, I haven't got arrested, I'm alive, whatever. And they don't do drug tests, they don't do anything, you're free to do whatever you fucking want, boy. Alright, LOL lol, lol lol, as a veteran that is very well off. So I don't know if you're talking to me, LOL. or saying that you're well off yourself, or you're saying that I'm well off. I don't consider myself well off. Um, I think I'm like doing all right. I'm getting by. We're making making a living. But he says, "What is a mistake often made as far as making decisions after the military, integrating into civilian life that causes things like financial and psychological struggles, suicide, depression, etc." Holy shit! I got deep real quick. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. You know, for this question, I think it is vital that you keep. Uh, the military that you keep a connection with somebody in the military whether it be you know friends that you speak to regularly through social media or it's somebody that your people that you talk to at your university like for me I'm part of the veteran club I was the president last year of the veteran club now I stepped down because I'm very busy with YouTube I'm just a member now but I hang out with my veteran friends all the time at my university we're all from different branches but we all have similar experiences from being in the military and I think that's very important once you get out also that's a good resource you know if you're struggling with stuff like mental um, illness you know they're a good outlet to help you with that to help you talk it through it you know because they're probably suffering from the same things as you all right mmm 33 nv cast how can teenagers start preparing for the navy right after high school so i like this question so i'm sorry i think i fucked that up but i think you're saying how can teenagers prepare for the navy and they want to join right after high school so um you're saying you're a sophomore and you want to blow the tests and physical requirements out of the water so that's awesome you want to get ready for the Navy and the military like way before you're even 18. I think that's, you know, that's super moto, bro. Keep up the motivation. I don't know how long you're going to keep that once you join. This Navy seems to suck it out of you pretty quick. But um, that's the key to stay motivated. Then you'll fucking do better than everyone else because they keep not motivated and you're still motivated. And then you promote. Look, if you really want to prepare for the Navy and you're like a freshman or a sophomore in high school and you still got a couple years till you're 18, what you can do... Fuck it, dude. Learn the Sailor's Creed right now. Learn the chain of command right now. Learn your general orders right now. Make sure you can do a 1.5 1, 1. mile run under uh, 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Make sure you can do 60 push-ups in 2 minutes and 60 sit-ups in 2 minutes. There you go. You already know everything you need to know before you go to boot camp. And you haven't even signed up yet. Oh, also you have to learn facing movements and shit. Right face, left face, about face. All the facing movements. That's easy marching basic shit. All right, my boy, Hiffy Wizzy Izzy. This probably isn't the video to do this on, but I've looked everywhere. What Navy job is it that boards enemy ships? For instance, the cargo ships that are unidentified and whatnot. Just volunteers or what? All right, so what you're talking about is the VBBS, the Visit, Board, Search, and Seizure. The VBSS, Visit, Board, Search, and Seizure. Um, those are teams that are on small boys. So you're talking about destroyers, cruisers, frigates. Any of those smaller ships in the Navy, they're going to have a team, the VBSS team, and you can apply. Um, it's a volunteer team. The best advice I can give you, though, is uh, once you get on your ship, to contact the junior officer in charge of the, BB of the VBSS team and uh, express interest. And I've been told normally there is a shortage of qualified people, so hopefully, you know, they do the legwork and get you trained up. 
But yeah, just contact them once you get on the ship ASAP. I was never stationed on a small boy. I was only on one for a month for training because my squadron, I was mostly on an aircraft carrier. All right, last question. This is a cool one from Eric B. Have I ever got hit by a rogue wave? Now, um, I have been in some pretty gnarly fucking storms. When I was on the small boy for my month training, I was on the Momsen. It's a cruiser. And uh, there were some crazy swells. It was the biggest swells of the whole deployment. Of course, the one fucking month that I'm on it, it was the biggest waves, and I did get a little seasick, I'm not gonna lie, I never threw up, but um, I did have a pretty bad headache for like a day or two, and then it eventually went away with the medicine, and I was a little nauseous, but it did go away with the, the medicine that medical gives you. So yeah, I did experience a little seasickness on the small boy. On the carrier, I was in a huge ass storm in the Atlantic when we were going from uh, the Middle East back to Florida, we had to cross the Atlantic, and there was a crazy storm we were in. Um, and if you're on the carrier and you can feel the boat moving from the waves, that's when you know it's fucking big. Because normally you can't feel shit at all because the carrier is so huge. It destroys every wave. But when the carrier's getting rocked by a storm, holy shit, yo, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's like, it's crazy. It gets your blood pumping, dude, because you're like, fuck yeah, dude. The carrier's getting fucked up. This is going to be wrapping up Ash JT number 20. Well, that's crazy. Make sure you guys show some fucking love and support for getting this far, man. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Episode 20... That's insane. We're also at episode like 38 of Military Life Before and After. I've done almost 50 days in the life. We're on this fucking YouTube grind. 2017, we're going to kill it. Um, social media below as always. You guys are the best. I'll see you tomorrow. Video tomorrow. Goodbye.